Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Sorry for the sound quality on this one. I'm away from my usual rig, so uh, it's not quite the uh, <laughs> the extreme high quality that I know we're all used to here. But, <laughs> but this is going to be the second after action report on our Battle of Linny. So those of you who don't know, a group of us, including myself and General Dan, we recently refought the uh, aspects of the Battle of Linny. So it was the attack on Linny itself and the attack on the left flank, as far as the French are concerned, on St. Armand La Haye. And that was done by the corps led by Van Damme. So, in the first after-action report, we looked at the rules that I felt either didn't quite work or could just have done with some tweaking. And I, I must be honest, I've read a lot of the comments, I've read a lot of the answers, and to be fair, I think I was probably over-harsh with the rules. I think they probably worked a lot better than I thought they did. Things like interpenetration, there is historical examples of that. I, I still think it's done a little bit too easily. But uh, yeah, no, no, that's, that's fair enough. I think it's an interesting uh, topic nonetheless. Now this one, I wanted to look at the tactics of the game, the things that I got right, and perhaps more importantly, the things that I got wrong as well. So the first thing that I, I discovered was, uh, if I can just set the scene, I had two regiments of light cavalry, and against me, my opponent had a unit, two units of dragoons, and a unit of lancers, I believe. And what happened on that flank was, obviously the dragoons saw off my hussars quite handily, oh well, they were chasser a cheval, really, and then that gave them free reign in that part of the battlefield. Due to the nature of the terrain, my troops were quite bunched up and that meant that there wasn't a huge amount of room for me to have loads of cavalry so i had to make do with the infantry and the artillery that i had with obviously the focus of the infantry going on the built-up areas of saint armand so it was tough for me uh, my opponent played really well i was playing against uh well against sort of two players and they were both really good to use the cavalry to pin my infantry remember Given that I was attacking, it was important that I maintained that forward momentum. And that was something which, forcing my troups into square, meant that it was very difficult for me to do. One of the things I did find was by countercharging, you often take your unit away from its supports. Remember, when you order the charge, you can do that as a brigade order. But when you countercharge, you're only doing it with a single unit. Now, luckily for me, my chasseurs were quite far back so that meant that they could meet the enemy halfway and still be supported to the flank but just be aware that sometimes not counter charging might actually be the right move you've got to think so mathematically you're hitting on uh threes instead of fours so you're going to have a 16 percent chance of a hit more of a hit which, which also could then be saved. So you've got an 8% chance of getting that extra hit by countercharging. However, you've got that definite plus one support to your rear if you don't countercharge. So I actually think there is a good reason not to countercharge. Now, if you're British, completely ignore what I've just said. The British, with their gallop at everything and ferocious charge rules, absolutely countercharge all the way because then you get to re-roll your misses, and that changes the maths of that quite quite significantly. But in general, if you are you know playing your cavalry and you get charged by the enemy, it's sometimes worth just thinking about whether you want to counter charge or not. In this instance, being light cavalry, he already had his heavy dragoons d1, so he already had one advantage there, and he rolled more dice than me. So probably i'd have been better off not counter charging i might have been better off just standing taking it at the halt and maybe having a support to the flank and the rear but as it was i managed to counter charge still get that support to the flank so it was perhaps a little more 50 50 in that case now after my cavalry had been defeated i had none really on that flank so it became a question of how can i protect myself against the enemy now luckily I'd only brought on a very small portion of Van Damme's command. 
by the end of the battle, I actually only used a division and a half, and he had three divisions under his command. So I still had plenty of troops, and that meant that when the next wave of reinforcements came on, they came on in a special formation for the French. They came on in Le Order Mixed. Now, I do have problems with Le Order Mixed. I'm going to go into it now, actually. I've been thinking about doing an episode on this for a long time, but I'm going to talk about it here. So Le Order Mixed is you have a French uh, unit in line, or maybe two, and then at each end of that line, you have a unit in attack column. Now, what that means is it's a very versatile formation. You get the firepower from the line and you get the supports and the combative power of the troops in the column of attack. However, it does suffer from some problems in black powder. And that is when you're in column of attack, you get plus one to your save. You also get plus two to your command if you're French as well. If you're in line, you don't get that. So... That means that Lord and Mixed, you're not really getting the benefits of being in column and you're not really getting the benefits of being in line because you've only got five shots, three from the line, one from each column. Whereas if all those units were in line, then you'd have nine, which is just under double, but uh, it's significantly more firepower. Now, admittedly, it does take up a lot more real estate as well. So if I'm not a huge fan of that order, uh, well, firstly, how do I think it should be changed? Well, I think that the unit in line should be allowed to get the plus two for pas de charge. It should be a brigade level formation. Now, you might say, well, you know, that's that's it's a it's a battalion level game. There aren't any rules in there for brigades to be in specific formations, and that's true to an extent. You could have that as a special rule for the French, of course. And there are also rules for things like um, being able to command two Russian battalions from the same regiment, for instance. I think it's the same with the Austrians as well. No, no, no. Two Austrian battalions from the same regiment. The Russians can only do one at a time. So there is the, you know, you could introduce that as a special rule. Now, one thing that I will allow the rules writers, maybe this is done on purpose, I don't know, is that by 1812, certainly by 1815, the commanders weren't the commanders that they were in 1805. The troops certainly weren't as well trained. So it could represent that when they finally, if they finally do the Austerlitz and 1806 campaigns, then maybe they you'll, you'll get the benefit for the battalion in line. We'll get the uh, pas de charge special rule as well. But as it currently stands, you don't. But what it did mean is that it meant that my troops could come on and they didn't have to form square of charge by cavalry. So it gave me the, the opportunity to shoot three times as my stand and shoot, hitting on threes, which is quite, quite devastating, really, and still fight in line. If I'd had cavalry superiority, then I wouldn't have needed to have come on in the Lord of Mixed. I could have just come on in attack columns and zoomed up the table. So, again, good play from my opponent. He still limited my availability there, but because I was French, I was able to make use of one of my special rules I don't use very often, and it meant that the attack could keep on going. Speaking of attacking, some of you who uh, may know my performance at the Great Game, which I didn't attack in Built Up Area, <laughs> we'll know that I am not keen on attacking fortifications. And that's because, well, I mean, not necessarily fortifications, but occupied buildings, etc. And that's because the enemy are very, very difficult to get out. You really have to assault on two sides at once. And even then, it's still not guaranteed. The plus three that the enemy gets from being in a building, you have to have four battalions or four units in order to get the attack and then the supports. And even then, you just, you're just drawing. The enemy have got a two plus save, so you've got to, uh, to cleave through that. So I would say, everyone, I didn't bother with them, and I really, really felt the benefit of them. Or oh, sorry, I, I felt the loss of them. Make sure you get those engineer bases painted up. Make sure if your enemy is going to be using a built-up area, then you have those engineers in those battalions that you're going to be sending in to assault those buildings. Now, you know me, I love my vignettes and things like that, so it's certainly not the end of the world. But uh, yeah, so make sure those engineers are, are ready, good to go, the extra dice and the minus one to the enemy's save, 
a fantastic double bubble bonus that you get there from having those guys. Of course, I will still say the difficulty I had taking those buildings, avoid them if you can, but by the same token, don't get trapped by going into them either. In this case, they were the objective, so they had to be taken, and the enemy had to defend them, so that's fine. But yeah, if you can avoid them, do, and don't get trapped by parking your units in them, because this leads us on to the next part, and this is what I, where I think I had the most success, on the left flank. We'll go into the centre shortly in a second. But after I'd taken the buildings, normally I probably would have just um, pulled those units out, put fresh units in, and then just held the buildings as the enemy attacked me. However, and this is coming from uh, conversations I've had with General Dan, he says that I'm not aggressive enough. So i always telling people on the channel to be aggressive with the French. So aggressive it was. So those units, even battered as they were, would move through the building. And then fresh units would cycle back into the buildings. So it meant that those buildings were always garrisoned by fresh units. But more importantly, it meant that I had units on the far side of those buildings that the enemy had to charge and destroy first before they could even attack the buildings. Now, it wasn't that difficult to charge and destroy those units because they'd taken one, two casualties or maybe they were disordered or something like that. So it wasn't beyond the wit of man for them to be destroyed, but it just meant that that was another turn that the enemy had to attack them before they could even get to the buildings. And, you know, it, if they held up two turns, three turns even, then that could really be the difference. And it did turn out to be the difference because in the center, so on day two, my teammate who was, uh, he was using the Imperial Guard, he unfortunately wasn't feeling so well, so I took over the command of them. And there was a bit, bit of um, a mistake in the rules. We thought that the young guard had stamina four. It turns out they only have stamina three. But the young guard pushed right through the center of the Prussians. And it turned out that the young guard were absolutely phenomenal. Now, as I say, we did think that they had uh, stamina three instead of stamina, uh, stamina four instead of stamina three. So we were a bit naughty there. But uh, yeah, it meant that they took a lot of the attacks from the Prussians. And it meant that the troops could go through and out the other side of the buildings without really being molested that much. So it meant that, you know, the attack could go in in the center, supported by those battered units that are on the flank. But they can still support, they can still fire at the enemy, things like that. And they also stopped them from operating as easily as they otherwise would. So very similar to how the cavalry were used against me. It wasn't necessarily the effectiveness of the cavalry. It was more to do with how they limited my movement and more importantly, perhaps my options for use of my troops as well. So by moving my troops through the built-up areas, then that meant that it was much simpler for me to defend those buildings because it meant that the enemy had to get through a yeah, almost like an armor in order to get through to the soft center inside although the soft center was a fresh battalion of troops <laughs> in a built-up area so it wasn't that soft uh so that brings us to the third part of the the tactics i learned from this video and that is the use of the guard the guard were absolutely phenomenal i cannot say how good the guard were i'm very looking forward to painting up some battalions of young guard myself on the back of this i'll certainly be getting four battalions of them now despite the fact that we thought they were stamina four instead of stamina three they still had that crucial two plus save and that's what made them absolutely incredible obviously it's a three plus normally two plus when you're in column of attack and that just meant that they did not die they just carried on fighting it, it, with the extra stamina admittedly but it just meant that they were really pushed through and it meant that even when the two brigades got broken as they did reasonably early on in the battle it wasn't too much of a problem because we started the middle guard and then obviously we had the old guard as well now this is something that i also found with the old guard i sent them in now i didn't send in the first battalion the grenadier rapide because you know they stayed back with napoleon and in the actual battle of linney he did commit the guard, although the battle was a lot more won than it was when we committed the guard in our game. So 
you could say that was a bit bit of cheese from me there, I guess. But we had the old guard. I wanted to get them used. So they stormed into the attack. And it was then very much which finished off the Prussian counterattack. And it meant that there, there was not really much left. Now, the guard were absolutely phenomenal, the old guard. And there's that's good because, you know, you want the old guard to be really good. But it's bad because they're your best unit. There is no reason not to use them on turn one. You know, I use them as the final reserve. There's no real reason to. They could have absolutely annihilated the centre far more successfully than the young guard did. So I could should have sent them in first before the young guard. But it was only because of, you know, the way that the his, Napoleon used them historically, things like that, that we didn't. So from a gameplay perspective, I would propose a rule so this is this is similar to a rule that is in the Horus Heresy. It's called the Price of Failure in the Horus Heresy. And if you have a, a large character, someone like a Primarch or a huge tank, something like that, and he gets destroyed, then your opponent gets an additional victory point. So I would recommend that if a unit of Old Guard gets destroyed, I'm going to refer to the, the special rule as La Garde Recule, which was the great cry that went up at Waterloo when the guard broke. So La Garde Recule special rule is for every battalion of old guard that's destroyed, they give away a victory point. Now, if you say that, you know, for instance, there's three parts on the battlefield, they're each worth one victory point each, but then there's two battalions of old guard and they give away two victory points if they're broken. Then or you could even say that you could say they give away two if they're broken, one if they're shaken. But I, th I think that might be a little bit strong. So I would say just one victory point for each old guard unit that's removed from the table. They give away your opponent. So it's called a price of failure in 30k in black powder. I would call it La Garde Recule, which would, you know, which just represents the fact that if you can destroy, defeat the old guard then that's a huge coup. It's a great victory for those troops that have managed it. So that's worth a victory point. And also, you know, the flip side of that is it would be bad for the French. So, you know, that, that's why they give away a victory point. So there you go. That's one of the great problems with guard units. It, it, I remember it being a big problem in Warhammer Ancient Battles as well. So I'm a Republican Roman player and you had the Triarii. You paid a lot of points for them. They were really good fighters, and realistically, they shouldn't even fight in the battle. It was very much like the old guard. If the battle, uh, well, there was a saying in ancient Rome, um, it's come to the triarii, which meant, you know, it was the chips were down, the right was on the wall. This was the absolute last ditch effort. So, you know, if it got to that stage, you were already in a lot of trouble already. Whereas when you were playing the game, you wanted the triarii at the front because they were your expert fighters. Similar to the old guard, there needs to be something that balances their use that says to the French commander, you've got these guys, but you're best off not using them. So I think something like La Garde Recul, special rule, they give away a victory point if they're destroyed. I think that would really help them. You've got them on the battlefield and then their use becomes a bit more risk reward. You've got this absolutely phenomenal unit, but it's a bit too dangerous if you use it. I should also point out as well, that we used a large regiment of Empress Dragoons. And that was absolutely ridiculous. I think it was 11 dice. It was, oh, it was absolutely filth box. So uh, I look forward to using one of those again in future. The other thing that we found in the battle, so this is not a direct um, result of my experiences, but from talking to the other players on the team, the grand battery that was formed was very successful. It cleared the area of dead ground in front of them. It did have its moments later on. It sort of failed to be quite as impactful as it had previously been. But, um, you know, for, for those first few turns, it was very, very strong. I think at medium range, it's it can be very powerful. Now, it's a shame that there's no rules in Black Powder for Grand Batteries. We've talked about it before. But uh, I certainly think it's something that we should uh, we should look at again. I mentioned in the video last week that I think it uh, these events really need a rules pack or an events pack. And I think 
that's something that you can introduce into an events pack. You know, the start of the battle, the grand battery gets to fire, or you know, you 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 do whatever it is you do. You do it in consultation with the other players, and you decide what it is you want to do with that special rule. And that's it, really. It was an absolutely phenomenal game. I cannot recommend big games of black powder highly enough. It was really, really good fun. I'm not sure what we're going to do next time. The battle was a victory for the French. So uh, together with their crushing victory at the Battle of Quatre Bras, I sus well, in fact, that may be a video in itself uh, on what would happen in that scenario. But uh, yeah, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you've got something out of the discussion that we've had in the last two videos about the rules and the tactics that we've discovered from playing these big games. You can read all the rules and you can read all the supplements and all that stuff, but it's not really until you start throwing down on the tabletop that you really fully, truly appreciate the subtlety of, of all the rules and how they work together and things like that. One thing that we were a little bit unsure of is what supplement rules we were using. So that's something that we could probably clear up ahead of time next time. But I, I, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And thanks for watching. And I will see you guys next time.